Oregon. Jordan Brenner alongside Michael Strite. Michael, Friday's been a good night for Oregon uh, this season. Conference openers have been good to Oregon this season. They're 6-1 and one in the first game of a Pac-12 conference series. Saturday, though, has been a different story. And, well, just take it away on that. How does Oregon continue their momentum into Saturday today? Yeah, Jordan, you and Bill yesterday were talking about just how important that swing by Tara McGowan may have been for the course of Oregon's entire season. They were 4-11 and in the last 15 games. Now they're 5-11 and in the last 16 games. So they're, they've been in sort of a skid, which you would expect because Pac-12 play is just so difficult. So yesterday, in a lot of ways, felt like a new hope for the Ducks. That's right, the Star Wars movie, A New Hope. But we've seen the Ducks do this before. They win the first game of the series, and then they really struggle in the rest of the series. So the Ducks need to do everything in their power to make sure that today's games aren't the Empire Strikes Back. And I know that maybe <laughs> it's a bit of a stretch to say that Arizona is the Empire or the Deja Mulipola is Darth Vader, for example. But I, I think it's pretty fair to say that Arizona and Deja Mulipola, they're pretty terrifying. So absolutely, work is cut out for the Oregon Ducks today to try and just keep the momentum going and not let this be a revenge game. Tara McGowan, I think, had the swing of her Oregon career last night. And Tara McGowan, anybody around this program knows how much she means behind the scenes, how much of a leader she is vocally, how much she works with the pitching staff. It was so great, I think, to see her come through in a big way. It isn't just Tara McGowan that's gotten going. Hannah Delgado swinging it well. Haley Cruz had a big hit yesterday as well seems like this lineup is starting to click in some ways even though they were no hit through six innings yesterday it's going to be tough again today though though bowen isn't going Alyssa denham for arizona has been terrific this season michael yeah and arizona it's sort of been a tale of two different offenses for them on the one hand they are the best lineup statistically in the pac-12 one of the best lineups in the country. They're incredible. Their stats are ridiculous, and we're going to talk a lot about those ridiculous stats throughout this game. But they've now played seven times where they've gone on the road against a ranked Pac-12 team. So seven games where they've had to travel to someone else's ballpark and face a really good Pac-12 squad. They've only scored more than four runs, four or more runs, in one out of those seven games. The other six times, they've scored three, two, one, or zero runs. So... And that one game where they scored a lot of runs, that wasn't even an official Pac-12 game. That was the second part of a doubleheader. So it's been a real struggle for Arizona to get that run production going in these huge games on the road. And it haunted them against Washington on the road where they dropped two. And it haunted them against Arizona State on the road where they dropped all three Pac-12 games in that series. So it's gonna be a big, big deal to see which Arizona comes out today. The same one that we saw just struggling across the board or the same Arizona that averages four, five, six runs a game? Well, it's a question that Mike Candre has faced all year, really, and he he doesn't have the answer to it. Yes, this week in a press conference, he said, well, that's a million-dollar question. Why aren't we producing away from home? Why aren't we producing against ranked teams? Arizona 2-9 and nine against ranked teams, and they are 9-9 nine and nine away from home. They're undefeated in Tucson. They're a 500 club away from Tucson. A huge game for Arizona as they look to be a top eight national seed. Michael, you mentioned Deja Mulupola. She's not the only All-American here. We're looking at a team that has several All-Americans, including their shortstop, Jesse Harper, potentially uh, one of the great home run hitters in the history of this sport. I mean, this is an Arizona team that has sights set not just on the postseason, but potentially on the Women's College World Series. The time is now for Arizona. Urgency is as high as it's ever been for this program this season. Yeah, Arizona, they've got an incredible group of seniors. And when you can get all-American level seniors kind of lining up the way that they have, of course you feel like this is your opportunity to make a run at the College World Series. This is an Arizona squad that absolutely could make some noise. But you got to remember, Jordan, that going to the College World Series is a road trip. You're not going to get to be in Tucson. And Arizona has to get over that hump of just being a, not a 500 team when they play on the road. And for Oregon, they also obviously have hope. Last time I was broadcasting with you, Jordan, they were the number three team in the country against UCLA. And the fact that they 
were the number three team in the country feels like a distant memory with how the last month has gone for them. But there's no doubt that they're also a team that could find themselves in the College World Series. And to do that, you have to strike in these kind of series at home. When you get a chance to take a series against Arizona like this, you can't waste these opportunities. You have to just get these wins in series like this. Game two, the stage is set. We're going to play two. Oregon going back to their lefty, Brooke Yanez, after her spectacular outing a night ago. She only gave up two hits. She struck out eight batters, Michael. She made one mistake. It was a home run in the sixth inning by Hannah Martinez. Other than that, she was lights out against Arizona. She seems to raise her game when the lineups get better. Her best outings against Arizona last night. And of course, she has beaten UCLA twice this season. It starts off tough for Arizona. Janelle Mionio, the left fielder, the Pac-12's leading hitter, 470, and she's in the box from the left side. For our first pitch, the corner's playing, and she cuts through the first pitch today at 206. It's called a strike. After Mionio will be Reina Caranco, the second baseman. Deja, second baseman. Deja Mulipola is the catcher hitting third. Jesse Harper, fourth. Malia Martinez hitting fifth, and Charlize Palacios is hitting sixth. Now the 0-1 from the lefty to the lefty, bouncing in the dirt, skipping by McGowan. It's 1-1. 7-8-9, Alyssa Palomino, Cardoza, Carly Scoopin, and Hannah Martinez. That's the lineup for Arizona today. One ball, one strike to Mionio. She came into yesterday, Michael, with a 27-game hitting streak. That was the longest active in the country. It was the longest for Arizona since 1994. The 1-1 one, one swing and a foul back to the screen. One and two. And she also carried a streak of 59 straight at-bats without striking out. So that's why it was so surprising for her to not just go 0 for 3 yesterday, but strike out two times, swinging in the first and swinging in the third. One and two to Mionio. The redshirt freshman swings and chops one to shore. Brito's going to have to hurry. The throw to first gets her. Mionio chopped down on the low pitch. That's a strategy that she's talked about. It's a strategy that's given her a lot of success this year, but Oregon's defense so prepared for that. And Brito, as good of an arm as you're going to see at shortstop in this conference. So one away. And brings up Reina Caranco. So Yanez. This season has a 2-4-2 ERA in 136 innings of work. First pitch to Caranco, she swings and misses the pitch high. It's 0 and 1. She is 17 and 5. Her 17th win was yesterday. 199 strikeouts now and 39 walks. Nothing in one to Caranco. The pitch is high. One ball and one strike. Like you said, yeah, Jordan Yanez on the verge of her 200th strikeout of the season. Quite an accomplishment for Yanez, no doubt about it. And the 1-1, one -one, swinging a tapper behind home. It's 1-2 and two now. And Yanez, against these lineups, Michael, that have so many lefties. And of course, Arizona is one of those teams with so many lefties. They have five in the order. It's just tough to put it in play. I mean, so much movement. It starts at your body. It breaks over the plate. The one-two dips down low. It's a ball. It's two and two. I think that's one of the reasons why she's had so much success against the Bruins. And now it looks like she's on her way to another big weekend against Arizona. And the two-two pitch. Swing and a miss. She struck her out. The 200th strikeout of the season for Brooke Yanez gets Caranco swinging. And a big congratulations to Brooke Yanez. She has 200 strikeouts for the second time in her career. She also accomplished that feat as a part of her terrific 2019 season with UC Davis. She struck out. Well over 200 that season as the pitch is high to Mulipola. 
Yeah, that season, Michael, she struck out 273 hitters. So 1-0 to Deja Mulipola. All-American catcher. Swings and hits a grounder back to the circle. Yanez has it, turns and throws to Bowden. And that will retire the side in the first inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. And nobody left on base. Yanez gets the cast down 1-2-3 to the bottom of the first after this quick pause on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. It's going to be a strike call. Jordan, it's worth noting that Arizona's defense leads the Pac-12 in double plays turned by yep. a pretty large margin. So that sacrifice bunt just to get out of a double play situation is going to be an option that Lombardi's going to consider. Oh, on a bunker. And the pitch dropping low. One ball, one strike. Great to bring up this Arizona defense. That's kind of their bread and butter, a little bit opposite of Arizona State in that way. I mean, they might be the best defense in the country. They are on pace to break the Arizona record for fielding percentage. The 1-1 one -one to Bunker, zipping in. That's a strike. Now 1-2 and two to Bunker. Yeah, and you talk about how we'd normally be talking about Haley Cruz as a stealing threat, obviously the fastest player on the Ducks, but Arizona has the best fielding catcher in the nation, potentially, in Deja Mulipola, so we're just not expecting to see any stolen base attempts. One, two, Bunker, it's a ground ball to short. This is a can of corn. Flipped a second for one, Bunker beat it out to first. So they only get the force and the lead runner in Cruz. Six to four, and the Ducks switch Cruz for Bunker on first. Now an out, here comes the hero from last night, Tara McGowan. And boy, is she starting to heat up, Michael. Seven game hitting streak. She has home runs in consecutive games. Those are her first two career Pac-12 home runs. McGowan takes a strike, the first pitch down the middle. Nothing and one on the heater from Denham. And Jordan, the home run she hit yesterday was on an 0-2 pitch that she pulled. I mean, you know you're feeling yourself when you can do that on an 0-2 pitch that was really well placed. 0-1 to McGowan, another heater on the corner. Nothing in two. McGowan is hitting 326 now. Five home runs, 25 batted in. The last time up, golfed a two run shot on an 0 2 pitch to win the ball game. 0 2 leans after that one, grounded to first, bobbled at first by Scoopin, and she can't make the play at first. So we talk about this elite defense by Arizona. How about a first inning error by Carly Scoopin? The Ducks have two on with one out. Here comes Hannah Delgado. Wow, and Jordan, we talked about how many double plays that Arizona's turned. I think that's what the problem was. The moment Scoopin fielded the ball, she was thinking, oh, I gotta turn this, what can I do with this? And she just took her mind off actually securing the ball. You know, she didn't really focus on just getting the one out. And first pitch coming into Delgado is a strike. It's nothing in one. So I think a lot of that error that's gonna be charged to Arizona, which we said is an incredible rarity for this defense was because Scoopin was so concerned with potentially turning it into a double play. Nothing one to the freshman Delgado. He's a breaking pitch a little bit high. Delgado is hitting 349, a pair of homers and 17 runs batted in. And had her long hit streak <laughs> up yesterday. It was up at nine games. Still swinging the hot bat though. 13 of her last 32. Ground ball to second. This one could be two. The pitch for one. The relay to first. Not in time, Delgado. Beat it out despite a nifty scoop by Carly Scoopin. Yeah, and Jordan, how frustrating is this for Alyssa Denham? Granted, she hasn't allowed any runs yet, but you had a very softly hit line drive for a single by Haley Cruz, and you've gotten three potential double plays in a row. Right. Denham is pitching incredibly so far, and it's instead she's got herself into a jam, and all she's thinking is, I'm, I'm doing fine. I just got to keep getting these double play balls. Oregon hasn't been able to get her up in the air. Oregon now looking for the two-out hit with Brito. She's an off-speed pitch framed perfectly by Muli Pola for a strike, nothing in one. It'd be a great time for Brito to break out. She certainly do. Oh, for her last 17 in her freshman season. Nothing in one. Runners on the corners. The pitch. There's the heater. Misses away. Ball and strike. Still, though, Michael, a 333 hitter. Time for the team lead with nine homers and has 28 runs batted in. One ball, one strike. We're scoreless in the bottom of the first inning. Thanks for being with us here on KWVA. 1-1 one, one pitch. And Brito with a big hack. 
doesn't stay through it, and foul tips it down the left side. One and two. Jordan, we expect freshmen to have struggles in this Pac-12 gauntlet. It's what Oregon's had to face in terms of pitching this last month pretty much is tougher than what you'll find anywhere else in the country you yeah. know, over a long period of time. So, of course, freshmen are going to have a hard time with this. Well, Denham certainly not an exception to that. One, two, two, Brito. Swing and a miss pumps it by her. And the Ducks strand a pair on base. Brito down swinging in the first. Denham's first K. And the Ducks fail to score despite a hit an error. And they strand two on base. 0-0 zero, zero through one full. We come back for the top of the second inning after a quick break right here on KWVA. Well, already more action than we saw yesterday in the first inning. Oregon putting runners on the corners in the last of the first. They strand two runners on an Alyssa Brito strikeout. So we move on, and here we are in the second. It'll be Jesse Harper, Malia Martinez, and Charlize Palacios. Scoreless ball game, and here comes the four-hole hitter, Jesse Harper, the All-American, against Brooke Yanez. Harper went 0 for 2 yesterday, though she worked a walk. And here's the first pitch to the righty shortstop. Missing down on the way. Ball no strikes. Harper, it's a down season for her, Michael, if you could call it that. She's still hitting 317 with 12 homers. And 38 runs batted in. But I think the expectation was for her to hit something like 25 this year. The 1-0, yeah, that's a strike. It is 1-1 one one to Harper. And I say that was the expe expectation for her because, well, the last full season she played, 2019, she led the NCAA with 29. She was a second-team All-American that year. 1-1 one one to the righty. And it's a drop ball that stays high. It's 2-1. Yeah, and just because she's only sitting at 12 on this season doesn't mean you can pitch her differently. You have to give her the respect of one of the most prolific home run hitters that is currently active in D1 softball. Well, the most prolific right now. One of the most ever. 2-1, screamer to center, back to the wall. It's over Pinkalinen's head. She runs to the wall, and she's out of the play. So Harper's around second. Brito out in center, throws to third, and Harper digs there, has her first triple of the season. A foot higher, that would have been her 13th. Pangolinen gave it a great effort and ran full speed into the center field wall. Thankfully, she looks okay. Jesse Harper with a triple in the second. Yeah, Pangolinen tried to make a play on the ball, and as soon as the ball bounced off of the wall, she came crashing into that real hard. It's great to see her just pop right back up. But that's why Harper was able to take an extra base and make that into a triple. That's why she's on third now. Here's Malia Martinez. That is a backdoor cutter for a strike. And this isn't to criticize Pangolina, and she made an incredible effort. But if she did play that differently, it could have been potentially limited to only being a double as opposed to uh, where Harper is right now sitting on third. 0-1-2 Martinez with a runner on third. Grounder left side. Sid stares the runner back to third. Tosses to Bowden across the infield for the first out. And with the corners in, and really the entire infield in with the runner on third, Michael. Great instincts by Sid. That was hit pretty hard. She made a nice play. Yeah, that was just very clean, professional work by Sid. That's textbook for how you're going to play that when there's a runner on third. They practice situations like this with the infield in a lot. Charlize Palacios cuts through the first pitch. It's nothing in one. Scoreless ball game in the top of the second on KWVA. Jesse Harper just let off this inning with a triple. There's one away. It's 0-1 to the 368 hitting DP for Arizona. And the 0-1 pitch is a little tall, a ball and a strike. So 368 is connected on 15 home runs and has driven in 44. 15 is tied for the team lead with Deja Mulipola. Couple catchers. One and one to Palacios. Swing and a miss. One and two. Yeah, Jordan, we see what Alyssa Brito's going through, and we talked about this freshman struggle that you would totally expect, but that's what makes what these freshmen on Arizona in Janelle Mionio and Charlize Palacios especially 
and Carly Scoopin just incredible yeah. that they're in their freshman seasons and both Scoopin and Palacios have slugging percentages over 700 and obviously Mionio with one of the best batting averages in the entire country and they're all just doing this in their first year. One and two to Palacios. Back door, it's on the corner and framed by McGowan, a called strike three. The second K for Yanez in game two. One more out away from stranding Harper on third. It was just the third hit she's given up this series. And Alyssa Palomino Cardoso, the center fielder, looking for the two out hit. Open stance from the left side. Wind of the pitch on the outside corner. 0-1. Cardoza from the left side, 336. Seven homers and 32 batted in. She went 0 for 2 yesterday. And the 0-1 to the lefty. Swing and a miss. That's buried down low, and it's 0-2. Markian has just unfazed through all of this. I'd say she's still in the exact same rhythm she was in yesterday. Just confident, especially against lefties like Palomino here. Yesterday she battled and battled. Here's the 0-2. Just a hair outside. Wow, what a pitch. It's one and two. Just barely missing that outside corner. Cardoza, Palomino Cardoza was full. One, two now. Swing and a miss. They go back in. She can't get it. Brooke Yanez with three strikeouts through two innings. And despite the leadoff triple from Jesse Harper, Yanez gets out of the jam unscathed. No runs that hit, no errors. And Harper stranded on third. 0-0, zero, zero, bottom two after this quick break on KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. Bottom two here at the Jane, 0-0 zero, zero between the Ducks and Wildcats. Already more action than we saw yesterday. A day where Oregon only had two hits and Arizona only, Arizona only had two hits. We have two hits combined and an error as we start the bottom of the second with Rachel Sid, Shea Bowden, and Maya Felder. That is six, seven, eight for the Ducks against Alyssa Denham. The righty deals, that pitch is in there at 58. Tat off her fastest stuff for that strike. Defensively for Arizona today, Janelle Mionio is in left field. Alyssa Palomino Cardoza is in center. And Hannah Martinez is in right. 0 1 said it's a chopper, a two hopper to short. Harper's high throw is in time to beat Sid by a step. Carly Scoopin has the catch radius of a tight end on that high throw. And Harper made that nice play. One away in the second. What a fitting name for first baseman Jordan. Yeah. She's just out there scooping balls. And she did have that error in the first inning, but good defensive inning other than that. Foul back by Batum, Bat Bowden. Nothing in one. Yeah, and Jordan, you can't have a perfect fielding percentage, right? You're going to make I guess errors not. Uh, throughout the season. And for Arizona... I, I'd be hard pressed to find a game where they had two or more errors. I don't think they've done that this season. And certainly they're going to have the same confidence they've had before. A one swinging a high chopper over third. Martinez with a hop, but couldn't get it. Bowden bounces a single. The second hit for the Ducks, and she's on base. And back to the defensive point, Michael, you were, you were saying, well, they can't have a perfect fielding percentage. Well, they did since April 17th. It was, it was a <laughs> long while. So first error, and Oregon bats a little more active today. Their second hit, one on for Felder with an out. Breaking pitch stays up, and it's one to no to Felder. Yeah, and interesting enough, last inning there was a lot of ground balls. We saw three sort of double play potential ground balls in a row off of Alyssa Denham. Now the 1-0 to Felder misses high and away, 2-0. So she's working this count. I think that's so important for her, at least at this point in the season. Oh yeah, Maya Felder's no doubt one of the most patient hitters on this team. 
Yeah, and I think you gotta fall back on that in the midst of a slump. She has dipped under 300 to 298. She's worked this one to three balls, no strikes now. So 298 is her average, still good. Five homers and 21 batted in, but for Felder, just three for her last 20. And she struck out swinging twice yesterday, which you don't see from her often. She's taken the whole way on the 3-0. Yeah, and you think trying to break out of a slump, most of the time it does take a well-hit ball, a single or a, single or a double, but for somebody like Felder, it might just be a couple walks to break out of a slump too, and that's a big part of your game. So 3 is now 3-1. Here's the pitch, swinging a one-hopper. Oh, scooped up by Martinez. The throw to second for one around the horn, a double play. Martinez fields the one hopper, 5-4-3. Martinez Caranco scooping. And Arizona is out of trouble in the second. No runs, a hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. Two have come and gone, we're still scoreless. Arizona and Oregon don't move. We have more Oregon softball coming after this break on KWVA. Welcome back into Jane Sanders Stadium. A cloudy day today, game two of four. Game one of two in this doubleheader. And for play-by-play -play of the third and fourth innings, here is my broadcasting partner. It's Michael Strike. Thanks, Jordan. Brooke Yanez getting back to work. She's only allowed three hits in the last nine innings of work against this Wildcats lineup that, like we said, brings five lefties to the plate. And that's been a real challenge for them to see that pitch coming out of the left side from Yanez. And here comes Carly Scoopin to lead things off here in the top of the third of a 0-0 game. The first baseman, like we said, has been very active. She's had an error, obviously, but a, a really remarkable play to turn that double play on the scoop, but even more so the grab at third base by Martinez. So Arizona, like we said, by Quite the margin leads the Pac-12 in double plays turns defensively. They add another one to close out the last inning, and here comes Carly Scoopin, the freshman, to the plate, batting 351. Swing and a miss on the first pitch from Yanez. Carly Scoopin also a bit of a table setter. She's got a 571 batting average when leading off an inning. So I, can you imagine what she's going to look like in two or three years? Just a freshman. Yeah. Special. 351 and nine bombs. It's out of this world. She's crouching in that batter's box. Second pitch, swing and a miss. But two in a row there. But Michael, the hole has been defense for her. She committed the last error for Arizona. It came on the 17th against Arizona State. She had one in that game. The game previous was a doubleheader. She had two errors, so she had three errors, all three of her career entering today on one day on the 17th. Swing and a miss, strike three. Yanez with her fourth of this game. And those lefties, they just step into the batter's box and they're not seeing the ball very well at all. I mean, it looks like the ball's screaming at you. And then as it approaches the batter's box and the plate, it seems like Giannis kind of just pulls a string and the ball goes up a little bit. A little elevated rising movement. It's just such a unique and effective pitch to lefties. First pitch swung on and missed by Anna Martinez. And you can see her trying to shake it up a little bit, steps out of the batter's box, takes a big walk. She did not like that she swung at that pitch. And right now, Brooke Yanez is just giving the Wildcats headaches. They really do not know what to do. But we also know how good this lineup is. So this could turn on a dime at any moment. The 0 1 pitch, bunt attempt, and she's going to be charged with a strike. I think she pulled that back, and it was just a called strike anyway. Well, don't let Martinez out of the nine hole fool you, though. Remember, she was the. One hit out of the infield yesterday with the home run. She also has home runs in two of three games. That's right. So she's going to show bunt again, but we know she pulled back and hit a home run last time. This 0-2 pitch is high for ball one. Hannah Martinez, just the one player in this lineup for Arizona that is not a senior or a freshman. She is a junior and also Arizona's pitcher, Alyssa Denham, is a senior as well. So an incredible mix of freshmen and seniors pretty much on this Arizona squad. Here's the one-two pitch, swung on and missed, strike three, the throw to first just to make sure, and that is the second out on the, the fourth strikeout in a row as Yanez <laughs> is just 
cruising through the bottom of the order. Yeah, four in a row, five overall. Yana's had eight yesterday, and she's on a remarkable pace today. Here comes Janelle Nionio. Entered today with a 470 batting average, but she also grounded out to lead this one off. This is her second time up. First pitch, high for ball one. So her batting average dropped to 466, which is still pretty absurd, but it's pretty incredible the uh, challenge that Mionio has had against Yanez more than any other pitcher she's faced all season. Mionio's just not seeing it. Here's the 1-0 oh, and another swing and a miss. Jordan, it's been quite a while since I've seen somebody make contact with one of these pitches, especially swinging from the left side. They're having big problems. Well, we know Yanez has, I believe, an 18 strikeout game in her career at UC Davis. She has 15 this year. This pitch inside as uh, Mionio dances to get away from it for ball two. So the count's two and one. Yanez on a streak of four consecutive strikeouts, looking to strike out the side against Mionio, who also struck out twice against Yanez in yesterday's affair. It was just the first time this whole season that she's had two strikeouts in a game. Next pitch is going to be in there for a called strike. Mionio does not offer at it. And here we are, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Mionio, like we said, struck out for the first time in over a month yesterday against Yanez. Proceeded to strike out again in that game for the second time, for the first time she's done that all year. And here comes the 2-2. This one taps to Yanez right over to first to Felder, an easy ground out. And that's another out for Mionio. Not exactly a K, but there's no doubt Yanez is having the same momentum as yesterday. Absolutely remarkable. No runs, no hits, no errors. A 1-2-3 inning. And the Ducks will get back to work with Pangolin and Cruz and Bunker in the bottom of the third of the 0-0 game. And during this break, we're going to send it to your own Justin Grosswiener in the KWVA Studios for a sports desk update. Thank you, Justin, for that wonderful sports desk update. Good to hear the Cal softball. They uh, missed a lot of games this yeah. season due to cancellations. It's good to hear them get back to their winning ways, even if it's against Long Beach State. It's a nice thing to see. And the more remarkable result, the game isn't final yet, but Utah sitting on a 3-0 lead over Gabby Plain in Washington. That would be quite the result. We're going to have to hear from Justin later on what the final score ends up being of that one. Well, Michael, how about the result yesterday between Oregon State and Arizona State? Mariah Masson shutting down the Sun Devils in Corvallis. ASU losing one to nothing against Oregon State. Stanford also lost to UCLA yesterday, which means that Oregon win leapfrogged them over Stanford back into the number five position in the Pac-12. Yeah, Jordan, we talk about Arizona and Arizona State. It, I think if you just took the best lineups that those two teams could put together, it would stack right up with the other seven teams in the Pac-12 conference. They have that much offensive talent down there in Arizona. But maybe that's only the case when they're actually in that's what I was about to say of Arizona. <laughs> I mean, there could be a serious power outage when they got to travel other places like California, Oregon, Washington, potentially. And uh, it's been a, a real struggle. So we'll also have to hear, I guess Arizona State's doing a little bit better today. But we'll have to see how they do in that one. So here comes Deja Pangolinen to start off the bottom of the third, batting out of the nine hole for the Ducks. First pitch from Denham, attempted bunt, but she misses on it for strike one. Pangolinen playing center field. The Ducks have been in a real search for their third outfielder. Delgado and Cruz obviously have been fixtures in the outfield, but they've rotated through Pangolinen, Ariel Carlson, Lexi Wagner, and Hannah Gailey at times. This pitch is going to be grounded up the middle, slow enough to give her a chance, but a brilliant throw by the shortstop. Caron not Caranco, correction, Jesse Harper, of course, and a great scoop by Carly Scoopin. Uh, to give them an out. You saw that Arizona defense once again. Well, I don't hate that at-bat from Deja Pangolin, and I'll tell you why. She's awfully athletic. That's why she's a center fielder. First pitch, she tries to lay down a bunt. I like that. The second pitch, it's low, but she kind of chops it down. And against a lot of infields, maybe not this one, she might beat that out for a single. First pitch to Haley Cruz is going to be in there softly, 53 for strike one. Haley Cruz started this game off with a single. Going back to yesterday, she started off she was the, uh, the tying run that scored for the Ducks on Tara McGowan's home run, so she's got two singles in a row here. Trying to string something together. Fouled back into the net for strike two. Yeah, such a battle 
in that seventh inning, Michael. Fouled off several pitches. And it's, it's, an, it's an at bat Melissa Lombardi pointed to. It's an at bat that Brooke Yanez pointed to and McGowan pointed to. It really was such an important AB. 0 2 pitch outside, ball one from Denham to make the count one and two. Yeah, Jordan, I was listening live yesterday in my car and I thought we really were going to see a Bowen perfect game against the Ducks, and that totally turned around quickly. The scorching ground ball down the line from Cruz. She's turning, digging for second. This could be three. She's on her way to third, and it's going to be a stand-up triple for Haley Cruz. Haley Cruz is heating up, folks. Three for her last three now. She'd been four for her last 21 entering the day, getting hot on the right time. Scorches a line drive past Scoopin inside the line towards the corner and from the outset of that at bat or of that swing you knew Cruz was sinking three and against this defense and in this ballpark it's not easy to do that standing up Haley Cruz still has a spotless and dirtless jersey a stand-up triple here in the fourth here's Lally Bunker you gotta see if you can turn this into some runs if you're Oregon in first the third round low. First pitch low for ball one here in the bottom of the third. That's right, runner on third base, one out. Allie Bunker with a chance to drive in the run with a well-hit ground ball potentially, a fly ball for a sack fly. A lot of options here for Bunker with one out. The 1-0, that's going to be soft in there and a little high, so it's going to be ball two, but a nice attempt by Alyssa Denham. She's leaning on that off speed as well to really mix things up. We saw a lot less of that yesterday from Bowen, who yep. just had incredible placement from her fastballs and just kept pounding that outside corner ruthlessly. So here's the 2-0 pitch to Bunker. Got herself into a hitter's count here. Swung on. That's into the outfield. Will it be good enough for Cruz to tag? She's going to attempt. No, she's going to stop and head back to third. Just a little bit too shallow, but a good effort by Bunker, and that's out number two. Yeah. Uh, it's just tough to run on Martinez in right field. Perfect throw to the play. It was a one hopper to Muli Pola. And she knew Cruz wasn't coming down the line, so she just kind of blocked it with her chest to keep it in front of her. That's an at bat that Allie Bunker is going to be frustrated about. That's, that's a spot where you have a runner on third, less than two outs. You got to get the runner in. First pitch, McGowan. This one into left field, but it's going to be caught for out number three, Tara McGowan. A one-pitch fly out, and the Ducks end up not being able to capitalize on the Haley Cruz triple, the same way that the Wildcats couldn't do anything with their Jesse Harper triple. So the score remains 0-0 after three. That inning had no runs, one hit, no errors, and a runner left on third base. Three innings of softball, and it looks a lot like yesterday. 0-0 in a pitcher's duel. You'll see us on the other side of this break for the top of the fourth. You're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. Welcome back to Jane Sanders Stadium. We're in the top of the fourth, and the Wildcats will bring up the heart of their order, Reina Caranco, the two-hitter coming up first with Mulipola and Harper scheduled to bat in this one as well. Brooke Yanez sitting on five strikeouts, has only allowed three hits in the last ten innings pitched for the Ducks. She's feeling it, and she's going to face another lefty here. First pitch. Uh, running bunt there, pulls back. It's going to be ball one, a 1-0 count for Reina Caranco. Yeah, Caranco, Michael, is kind of like leadoff hitter 1B. Mionio and Caranco both don't have a ton of power, but they're slap hitters, and they get on base at such a tremendous percentage. Reina Caranco swung on and missed strike one. Yeah, Caranco and both Mionio both sitting on just one home run each on the year, which... You don't mind because they both get on base a ridiculous amount, and the next four hitters in the order all have 10-plus home runs. So they get to score a lot on those home run balls from the hitters behind them. The 1-1 pitch, a little bit outside for ball two. Yeah, and Caranco did miss time this year, and, you know, that's one of the stories of the season for Arizona. Caranco missed some time. Uh, there's another player missed time. I'm forgetting right now, but they're finally getting healthy. That's right, the 2-1, swinging bunt, grounded to Bunker, and a nice athletic play by Bunker, the flip to Felder, and that is out number one, really nicely played by Bunker to just track that one all the way down and convert that into a flip for out one. Yeah, no look, she caught it deep in that hole between Bowden 
and herself at second and ran towards the line, flipped it with her right hand. You didn't even look, I don't think, for a nifty first down. Yeah, that's the kind of ball in play that Caranco usually gets on base on. I mean, she's quick out the box from that left side. Here's the first pitch to Mulipola. Inside for ball one. Deja Mulipola and Maddie Hackbarth, I think, are the clear 1A and 1B in terms of the best hitters in the entire Pac-12 conference. In my opinion, I would lean on Mulipola, actually, as she's had slightly better numbers in Pac-12 play, but there's no doubt that they're just 1 and 2 here. And the 1-0, again, ball two. And Fury Yanez especially with one out already on the board. This is just another one of those situations where it's okay if this ends up being a walk. I agree with you. Those are the two leading candidates probably for player of the year. But it's kind of like LeBron James missed a lot of time this year. He's out of the MVP discussion. I think you might have to say the same about Rachel Garcia, who uh, may have been a snub of uh, your elite hitters, the best hitters in the conference. Yeah, Deja Malipola has gotten on base in 40 out of 42 games this season. The 2-0 pitch, strike one called. There's only been twice this entire year that Malipola has failed to get on base at least once, and she's actually 29 for 42 at getting on base twice in a game. So wow. more often than not, she's actually gotten on base twice, and yesterday's performance where she just had one walk was sort of... Uh, aberration for her. That's going to be a 55 mile per hour pitch for called strike two and a 2 2 count on Mulipola. And she's a catcher, Michael, but yesterday beat out an infield single. She runs extremely well for her position. That's right. The infield single yesterday, one of the three hits that Yanez has allowed this weekend. 2 2 pitch outside, ball three. She's going to get herself into a full count here. Dijon Mulipola with a uh, 546 on base percentage entering today which obviously she got out in her first at bat so it's dropped to 542 but anything over 500 is just absurd here's the full count pitch swung on lined hard into left field for a base hit maybe more she's going to turn and stay at first base but a well hit single for like we said jordan one of the best hitters if not the best in the entire pac-12 conference well, if you miss up to Deja Mulipola, she's going to make you pay. And I think Yanez feels fortunate that that's just a base hit. And she, she hit it extremely hard down the line. Delgado is shaded near that line. So they got it back in the infield. Just a base hit. But you continue making mistakes up in the zone of these hitters. It's, uh, it's just about time before they get going. First pitch to Jesse Harper. Swung on right into the gap. That's going to be off the bottom of the wall. And here comes Mulipola. She's going to get right into third safely a stand-up double for jesse harper on the first pitch not enough for Mully Pola to try and score off of but we're going to now have second and third with one out arizona threatening to score and jesse harper is officially on cycle watch with now a triple and a double in today's game and she is two feet combined away from being two for two with two home runs she has hit it off the fence now twice a meeting in the circle yanez seems to have uh, slipped really for the first time in this series. I expect Oregon to stick with her, but Reagan Breedlove is warming yeah, in Jordan, the Oregon pen. Like clockwork, we saw her mowing through lefties. She got five of them out in a row, and the first two righties come up and get a single and a double off of her. And here come the two more righties that are in Arizona's lineup in Malia Martinez and Charlize Palacios on deck. And, you know, we talk about these righty lefty splits. The lefties are just struggling majorly but this middle of the order features four consecutive righties and if you're arizona this is when you got to capitalize right here you, you got to get something you got to get a run here from martinez and palacios here comes martinez first pitch strike one called no actually my yeah. bad close pitch though close pitch i my mistake so that's going to be a 1-0 count on malia martinez the third baseman who turned a really athletic double play in the bottom of the second her first time up she grounded out to rachel sid at third Runners on second and third. RBI's out there for Martinez, potentially. The 1-0. Again, strike one call this time. Kind of in a similar area. Yanez confidently trying to stay on that outside corner, not letting any pitches get up there. You don't want to make any mistakes right now. Here's the 1-1 to Martinez. Swung on, grounded, and foul. Just sort of tapped down the right field or down the first baseline for a foul ball, but almost made some serious contact with that. 
Got to figure out a way to strike Martinez out now. I mean, ground or shallow fly out works too, but Martinez hasn't struck out this series. She's put it in play every single time. Yep, Martinez has two sacrifice flies on the year. Those are also in play. The one-two pitch, swung hard and into the net. Another foul ball. She's definitely trying to avoid the strikeout. Obviously, you put it in play, you can get another RBI for yourself. There's 34 on the year for Martinez. She's looking for number 35, maybe number 36 too, if she can get this one to find some grass. So Yanez trying to get herself out of a jam. The one, two, high off speed for ball two, but a good pitch, I would say, to try and catch Martinez off balance. I think it ended in the strike zone, Michael, but when it crossed the plate, it was still maybe a tad high to Martinez, a close pitch, and it's evened up at two and two now. Yeah, Jordan, that's what counts. Not where the catcher catches it, but when it crosses the plate. Here's the two, two, swung on and missed. Another strikeout for Yanez. She is now at number six on the day, and we're only in the fourth inning. And you could tell that was reach back. This is as hard as I can throw it for Yanez. Sixth strikeout, none bigger than that one against Martinez. Here comes another one of the Wildcats' terrific freshman, Charlize Palacios. First pitch, outside ball one. And with the incredible production that you're getting out of these freshmen as Tara McGowan jogs out for a quick chat with Yanez in the circle, the incredible production you're seeing from Scoopin, from Palacios, from Mionio, and the seniors that is just all Americans up and down the board, you can see why there's a lot of pressure on this Arizona team. I mean, this is just looking on paper. It looks like one of those seasons where sort of the stars are aligning for Arizona to make it into something special. So of course there's gonna be pressure to perform. The 1-0 pitch fouled into the net for strike one. It's gonna set up a 1-1 count on Palacios. And they've lived up to it in all games except for the biggest ones. And you know, it, it's now or never for Arizona. This is a team that's too good to go two and nine against ranked teams. And I think last night's game might have been rock bottom for the team. And it's weird saying that for a top 10 team, but it was that big a loss. 1-1 one, one pitch, high, and Arizona number seven in the country right now. I mean, that puts you in a position to host a super regional, but if you struggle on the road here against Oregon, and if you have UCLA coming up next weekend for Arizona, that's obviously a tough test, even if they get to play the Bruins at home. You don't want to let that slip. Here's the 2-1 pitch, swung on and missed, strike two. The Wildcats have some have two huge weekends, honestly. You have to be able to uh, win these huge games and figure it out with the uh, committee, the tournament selection committee watching and deciding whether you're worthy of hosting that Super Regional. Oregon in the same position, obviously, trying to uh, reverse their slide as they're number 12 right now in the country. 2-2 two -two pitch, fouled back. So great at bat from Palacios as she's going to make Yanez earn it. Still runners on second and third base. We're going to have two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Yep, two on here. Huge moment in this ball game here. And this is the last of the four righties in a row. Yep. The fourth righty in a row that Yanez is facing. She's trying to get this one out. The 2-2. Two -two. Here it comes. High and outside for ball three. And, of course, Palacios is such a dangerous hitter on deck, but... You definitely don't want to make a mistake with an open base here to Palacios. The full count. Here it comes. Soft off speed. And a strike three called for Yanez. She started celebrating that before the umpire even called it. She knew that was a perfectly placed pitch. And that is strikeout number seven for Yanez as the Ducks get out of a jam. And the score is still 0-0. Zero, zero. What? a weekend for Brooke Yanez that we have seen so far and the Ducks will try to ride that momentum in the bottom of the fourth after no runs two hits no errors and two runners left on base for the Wildcats the Ducks get back to work trying to break this 0-0 game you're listening to KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM welcome back it's the bottom of the fourth and Jane Sanders the score is still 0-0 we've got another pitcher's duel Alyssa Denham a lot of credit to her she's only allowed three hits and three innings of work herself First pitch is going to be inside, ball one to Hannah Delgado. What a filthy pitch, Jordan, last inning <laughs> by Brooke Yanez. 
she was already screaming, as I imagine you would after an incredible pitch like that before the umpire even called it. This is going to be a bunt laid down by Delgado. She could get to first safely, and she will. No throw from Alyssa Denham. Just a perfect bunt by Delgado. And I'd love to see that more from Hannah Delgado. Just like I said, I'd like to see it more from Deja Pangolin. And Haley Cruz isn't the only player on this team with excellent speed. Perfect bunt, dying in front of the plate, or yeah, right in front of the plate. No chance to get the speedy Delgado. And that's a great way to cushion the average. And maybe start another hitting streak here in game two. Here comes Alyssa Brito to the plate. And we talked about potentially this being another sacrifice bunt opportunity. She shows bunt, she pulls back for ball one, and it's gonna be a free base for Delgado as that squirts away from Molapola in the catcher spot. And that is, ends up not needing a sacrifice bunt. We saw, you know, with the struggling Brito, with the double plays that we know Arizona's capable of turning, that was sort of a, a perfect opportunity for Oregon to just move the runner over, but instead they won't have to. Well, I think they're still gonna put the sacrifice on to get Delgado to third with less, with nobody out of the inning. Yeah, here's the 1-0 count. Brito, no bunt, instead a swing and a miss, and just a big hack from Brito. She's got that swing that you know it's the reason why her stats are still so, so high and why she came into Pac-12 play as one of the best hitters in the entire conference, but it's been a lot of swings and misses for her since Pac-12 play has started. Another swing, tapped foul, back into the backstop, make it a one-two count. Yeah, a really interesting decision not to put that sacrifice on, but Brito isn't a naturally gifted bunter. I mean, think about it, she hasn't had to bunt her whole career entering into Oregon. So Lombardi letting her swing the bat to try and get out of this slump. Yep, you gotta swing your way out of a slump. This one-two pitch is outside to give her a ball two. Brito struck out in her first appearance today. Like you said, she's on a pretty big uh, slump. Oh, for her last 18 now, is it, Jordan? That sounds right. Here's the two-two. Swung on, grounded, foul down the third baseline. Going back to Yanez and her incredible strikeout. She just, 56 miles per hour, just dropped it into the zone. The umpire hadn't yet called strike three, but she already knew it was a strike. And when you're a pitcher, you just know. You have that feeling, you did the perfect pitch. You've gotten yourself out of a jam. There's no better feeling. You live for those moments in softball to get that strike three called. This one, a check swing is gonna be tapped in front of the plate by Brito, Denim, Fields it and does toss it. So it ends up being sort of a sacrifice bunt <laughs> anyway. Brito ended up choosing not to offer it that pitch, but she made contact with it and it just kind of dribbled down the first baseline. And a good play by Alyssa Denham to not panic and run over, field that, and make sure that they still got an out out of it. But the runner advances to third. So another opportunity for the Ducks to score one. Yeah, swinging sacrifice bunt right there. It's a little half swing right up the first baseline it gets the job done it does get the job done and here's the first pitch swung on and missed to Rachel Sid who's also 0 for 1 on the day grounded out in her last appearance so we've got one sacrifice fly on the air for Rachel Sid runner on third base one out she's going to be looking to get one out to the outfield in a game like this where both teams are just not finding any runs. Small ball might be the key. 0-1 pitch outside for ball one. Yeah, Rachel said stands so far away from the plate. Pitchers have been opting to pound that outside corner here. See something leak over the middle of the plate or come into Sid. She's so dangerous, but if you can paint that outside corner, it's tough for her. 1-1 pitch to Sid. Bunt attempt is just gonna be popped up and snagged by the first baseman scooping. Sid trying to get a real sneaky bunt down that could have scored the runner at third Delgado, but instead ends up popping one up, and that's just a free out for the Wildcats. Well, the story of this ball game has been runners stranded, Michael. The Ducks stranded two in the first inning. Arizona stranded two in the fourth inning, and have three stranded overall. That's right, here's Shea Bowden. Coming up to the plate, first pitch low. Yeah, the Wildcats have stranded three runners in scoring position, no less. And yep. The Ducks have also, I believe, stranded two runners in scoring position with the potential for this to be their third as well. So a lot of clutch hitting opportunities. Nobody's come through yet. This one grounded by Bowden up to Denham. Denham with the easy throw to first, and that's out number three. The Wildcats get out of it. 
pitching excellence from both sides. The score is still 0-0 after four innings. That inning had no runs, one hit, no errors, and a runner left on third base. Both teams struggling to get those runners in scoring position home. On the other side of this break will be the top of the fifth inning, the bottom of the order for the Wildcats. You're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. Welcome back to the game. Here we are in the top of the fifth, and to take you through it, my broadcasting buddy, Jordan Brenner. Thank you, Michael. What a game we've had. Seven combined runners stranded between Oregon and Arizona, and we are scoreless in the top of the fifth. Alyssa Palomino Cardoza for the Cats against the lefty Brooke Yanez. And the deal, swing and a miss. We've seen quite a few. Maybe that was foul tipped off of McGowan, but just barely grazed. It's nothing in one. Yanez has had the strikeout stuff all series. Eight yesterday, seven today, 15 overall against the number one offense in the conference. The 0-1, Palomino Cardoza bounces it towards her own dugout, pulls it foul, and it's 0-2. Jordan, we've seen the Ducks use Yanez so many innings this season that sometimes she does sort of hit a wall, and you just kind of see that she's still pretty good, but she's just not as effective, not quite as elite as we know her to be, and we haven't seen that come up yet, but it's always looming. Palomino Cardoza takes the 0-2 pitch high and away. It's 1-2. And that's why I think what she did last inning was so impressive in the fourth. The one-out single by Mulipola, the one-out triple after that, or one-out double by Harper. Then Giannis gets two strikeouts to get out of the jam. The one-two, swing and a miss, buried down low. The third strikeout in a row, and now her second straight day with eight strikeouts against the number one offense in the conference. Brooke Yanez lights out. Yeah, and these bottom of the order left is Palomino, Scoopin, and Martinez. They're 0 for 4 with four strikeouts right now. Scoopin with that wide open Luis Gonzalez like stance. Breaking pitch stays up to her. It's 1 0. Picked up her fourth error in the field today. Yeah, Scoopin gets so low in her batting stance. It's like her helmet's almost as low as the catcher McGowan. Huge recruit out of high school last year. At a Tucson high. The 1 0. Swing and a pop up out of play over the concourse left side. 1 on 1. And of course, Arizona, they kept her in Tucson. She's the 21st recruit nationally and is a player. Michael, she's going to be the face of the program in two, three years. It's going to be a great story. Still, people learning what she can do. 1-1 one, one in the air on the infield. Sid makes the call and the catch even with third. And there are two away in the fifth. And Yanez seemed to regain that excellent form after those two hits in the fourth inning. Yeah, Jordan, yesterday's game was one of the fastest of the season for Oregon in just what you said, an hour and 40 minutes. And yeah. We're on pace for the same thing as both pitchers are just so confident right now. Hour 40 yesterday and eight combined one, two, three innings. Now the lefty takes the pitch low. It is Hannah Martinez. It's one and oh. She's 0 for 1 with a strikeout today. It was the sixth inning yesterday that she made the difference with the solo shot for Arizona. Still their only run in this series. And a 1 0 -oh count here in the fifth. The pitch, she can't touch it. One and one. Cut on and nothing. So eight strikeouts for Yanez in this one. 16 for the series, 207 for the season. A ball and a strike. Wheels and deals the pitch high. It's two balls and one strike. Jordan, I keep hitting on these lefties in this lineup and the way that they're struggling, but they're 0 for 9 right now with five strikeouts and four balls that stayed in the infield. I mean, they're just not making any contact whatsoever. Base is empty in a scoreless ball game. 2-1 to Martinez. Looks at it, can't swing. Fooled on 62. Right in there to even the count at two and two. Zero, zero. Pitching has been the theme all weekend. 
Yanez in her spot on the rubber. The 2-2 on its way. Swing and a grounder. Two hopper to Bunker. Has it. Throws to first in time. Yanez has set down five in a row. A 1-2-3 top of the fifth. The Ducks look for runs with Felder, Pangolin, and then Cruz do up in the home half. Right here on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. Home half of the fifth inning, Alyssa Denham's done her thing today. She's through four scoreless innings of work. Only one strikeout today, no walks, and has gotten out of trouble. She has given up four hits and stranded four runners on base. In for the fifth inning, she'll face 8-9-1, Felder, Pangolinen, and Cruz for Arizona. And at least this pitching staff for Arizona has looked top 10 quality. They have lived up to the hype. They entered this weekend as the second best staff, according to ERA in the conference. Their top ranked offense has not lived up to the hype. And a first pitch strike to Feller. That's right, for Arizona, they are now through 12 innings in this series, and they have only scored one run on a Hannah Martinez home run. 0 1 against Feller. Swinging a little grounder outside of third and foul. Nothing in two. Yeah, Jordan, we talked about Arizona when they went on the road against Arizona State and Washington. The offense had its struggles, but even then the struggles meant they were scoring one or two or three runs a game. What we're seeing right now for Arizona, and especially if they end up getting shut out in this one, is unprecedented. Oh, two, Felder on the ground to third for the second time today. This time she is retired. Last time it was the 5-4-3 double play. This time just the 5-3 ground out. One away in the fifth inning. Felder's struggles continue. A little roll over there. Here comes Pangolinen. Attempted a bunt her first time up. Wasn't successful. Then later in the count, grounded out to shortstop. Takes one low and inside. Almost hit her. Bounced in the dirt. 1-0. Last time Pangolinen was up, I was talking about how Melissa Lombardi just struggling to find that third outfielder that she can rely on. Pangolin and Lexi Wagner, Ariel Carlson, Hannah Gailey, all have seen playing time. There's a screamer into right center. Rolls to the wall. Pangolin on her horse to second and has a stand up double. Deja Pangolin with her first extra base hit in 2021. And what a time to do it. Haley Cruz will come up with a runner in scoring position. Wow, Jordan, that was just a beautiful piece of hitting, and I think that's going to put a smile on Melissa Lombardi's face. Obviously, she's a little bit more stressed right now about getting the runner home since Oregon has stranded so many runners in this one. But when she sits down after this one, she's going to say, all right, Deja Pangolinen, I would expect to see her start this next game after the double. I'd expect to maybe see her get a start tomorrow. If she gets on a tear here, she's going to be Oregon's center fielder to stay. Now Haley Cruz, the first pitch tall to Oregon's right fielder. And Cruz is one of the players not struggling offensively in this series. She has three hits in a row, and she has two of Oregon's five hits today. A single, a triple this afternoon. The 1-0 to Cruz. Pitch comes in, and she lays off of it. Two balls, no strikes. Allie Bunker on deck, McGowan in the hole is now the time for a team to get on the board. Cruz in a 2-0 count. The pitch from Denham looks at it and takes a strike over the outer half. Yeah, and we talked a lot about Yanez, Jordan. A lot of credit to Liza Denham. She's been equally incredible. I mean, there haven't been uh, any str or one strikeout today just for the entire day for her, but she's been getting out of jams. 2-1, Cruz with a check swing, goes fouled on the right side, 2-2. Two and two. So perhaps not as flashy as striking out eight as Yanez has with just one strikeout for Denim, but she's getting ground balls. She's getting double play balls. She's giving her great fielders behind her chances to make plays. And most importantly, she's making huge pitches when it counts with runners in scoring position. Two and two, runner on second, scoreless game. Cruz waits for the off-speed pitch and fouls it back. She was right on that one. Maybe the pitch a little bit outside, but certainly timing was good there. And it's two and two again. 
Still scoreless, bottom five. Pangolinen with the extra base hit to right center. The 2-2, Cruz with a line drive, again into right center. Here comes Pangolinen, the Ducks take the lead. Cruz into second standing. She has a single, a double, a triple today. The Ducks won. The Arizona Wildcats, nothing in the fifth inning. Well, Jordan, do you think Kaylee Cruz knows it's senior weekend? I mean, talk about rising to the occasion. More than anyone else in an Oregon uniform, Haley Cruz knows when to step up and rise to the moment. She's just somebody that loves putting on a show, loves giving the fans here in Jane Sanders a lot to cheer about. She's done that all day today with, like you said, single, double, triple, Put her on cycle watch if she could hit a home run later in this one, obviously. Cycle's a little bit harder to get in softball than baseball because of the seven innings, but what an incredible day for Haley Cruz. It's a senior weekend takeover for Haley Cruz. Four hits in a row, a homer away from the cycle, and gives Oregon the lead here in the fifth inning, a double to the wall. A hit down the right field line, a hit to right center, a single to left field today. She's done it in every part of the yard. And here comes Allie Bunker. Bunker takes low and inside. Still Alyssa Denham, though Hannah Bowen is warming up real quick in that Arizona bullpen. One to nothing, Oregon. They come through on their sixth hit of the game. Bunker in scoring position, rather Cruz in scoring position. The pitch to Bunker is high. Two balls, no strikes. And Cruz ripped that ball. Clutch Cruz. 2-0 to Bunker. Corners playing in for Arizona. Denham has her side and throws. Bunker with a line drive, hooking foul. Was off the end of the bat. And it's 2-1. Haley Cruz Jordan is just such a performer. I mean, it just feels like she knows to give the crowd exactly what they want. She knows when it's her time to shine. And she's standing on second base right now, knowing that she just gave the Ducks a 1-0 lead. And in this series, you never know, that might be enough. But the Ducks looking for insurance on this 2-1 pitch to Bunker. Swing and a diving line drive at second. Caranco's under it and makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Jordan, I don't know what Allie Bunker's stats were yesterday exactly. We know she had a sacrifice bunt, but she's 0 for 3 today. So she's kind of found herself in a, a bit of a mini slump. Yeah, 0 for 5 in the series. Here comes McGowan with two outs. That one powers over the outside portion of the plate. And it's a strike. Yeah, Haley Cruz and Allie Bunker batting 1 and 2. They're the table setters. They drive the entire offense. They're sort of like the key that starts the engine. 0 on to McGowan. She checks her swing. They want an appeal. They go to first. Megan Raven says she checked her swing. And it's one and one. So the difference in this ball game, back-to-back -back doubles. They go leaning and Cruz. One to nothing, Oregon. Here's the one one to McGowan staying high, two and one. And also at play right now, we don't know if McGowan's gonna get another at bat is her hitting streak, which is up at seven games now. Two balls and a strike to McGowan. Swing and a line drive to right, and it goes in the Oregon pen. May have even hit off of Hannah Bowen, two and two. Yeah, Hannah Bowen had to kind of sidestep. A similar foul ball on the pitch that preceded her home run last night. So, food for thought. Two and two, two outs, a runner on second. Denham with a stroll, now ready. Has her sign, comes home with a 2-2 pitch, swing and a grounder to first, scoop in, catches it in fair territory near the line, taps first to get out of the inning. But the Ducks get a run on two hits, back-to-back -back doubles from Pangolin and, and Cruz, no errors, and a runner left. The Ducks take the lead, one to nothing through five full. We're on to the sixth on KWVA. Top of the sixth inning, new ball game. Oregon with a lead, one to nothing over Arizona. Haley Cruz with a clutch knock. Here's Michael Strike for play-by-play -play of the sixth inning. That's right. 
Eric Yanez, eight strikeouts on the board, but this is gonna be the third time through the order for her. And it starts with Janelle Mionyo, who despite being in the middle of pretty much the worst series for her of the season so far, her on-base percentage still above 500, her slugging percentage still above 500, just astonishing for a freshman. She's gonna step up and show bunt. The first pitch she pulls back, high and outside ball one. This is gonna be really interesting to watch. Yanez make her way through the order the third time. She gets two lefties at the top with Mionio and Caranco. It's pretty vital that you get those lefties out because we've already seen those four righties in a row do some damage. And you don't wanna have runners on when you get to them. The 1-0 pitch, swung on and missed, strike one. Yeah, Mionio and Caranco, if you told me they'd be 0 for 10 combined here in the sixth inning of game two for the series, I, I really wouldn't believe you. These might be the best top two hitters we have in this conference. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Mionio. She runs and offers, doesn't offer at that pitch, so it's low and inside ball two. We talked about Yanez, how Sometimes she does kind of hit a wall, and she obviously hasn't hit that yet, but one of the earliest signs of her sort of starting to lose it a little would be a walk. Here's the 2-1. Hi, and that's ball three. It's gonna be a 3-1 count. Yanez has not walked anyone in this one yet, but it would definitely be something for Melissa Lombardi to keep an eye on if she allows a first batter walk in this one here in the top of the sixth to Mionio. The 3-1, that's going to be a cold strike to Mionio got about halfway down the first base line. Wanted a walk, instead she's gotta make a slow trot back to the batter's box and it's gonna be a full count. Rihanna has with a good pitch to get herself into a full count situation. See if she can bring it back inside for the lefty. Swung on and lined up the middle, bounces off second base for a single. A great piece of hitting by Mionio, and that is why she is batting 462, and that number is going to go up. She's on base with a base hit. Yeah, she's just so good, and it's a matter of just about time. She hit it right off the second base bag. I thought that weird carom might have uh, made her think about two. But she can just steal second, Michael. She is 12 for 13 stealing this year. So we'll see if Arizona tries to sacrifice her, just lets her take off for second herself. That's right. Here's Caranco, lays one down. Looks like a sacrifice attempt. Sid is just gonna fire it to second and get the out at second. That is an all world play by Rachel Sid. No look, sidearm throw to second against the speedy Mionio. It looked like a perfect sacrifice, but Rachel said you can't overstate the importance of that play, keeping a runner out of scoring position. Sensational play by Rachel Sid. Here comes Deja Mulipola. The Wildcats need her now more than ever, down 1-0 with a runner on. The first pitch to Mulipola. It's gonna be a bit low, but it's still called strike one. A nice job by McGowan catching that one and sliding her glove into the zone. Yeah, what a phenomenal play by Rachel Sid there. Went for the gamble of throwing it to second. The 0-1 pitch to Molipola. Swung on and missed strike two. And Rachel Sid, that definitely was a risk. I mean, if that doesn't <laughs> go well, if that's a safe at second, or if that goes into the outfield, that is disastrous for the Oregon Ducks. But you wouldn't even think about that because of how well she played it. I mean, it just looked like that was the plan all along. She made it look so easy, so smooth. Rachel Sid does what great fielders do, which is she made it look like it wasn't even that hard of a play. The 0-2 pitch, high to Molipola as Yanez looked like she wanted to see if she could get Deja to chase with a pitch to waste, and now it's gonna be one and two. Well, it's a gutsy play by Rachel Sid, and it's a play, you know, you throw it to first, everybody's like, all right, that's the play we expected, but she goes for the force at second, and just really special. Absolutely, strike three swinging! Number nine for Yanez. And that one may be her most important. Obviously, she got two in a row with runners on second and third to close out the top of the fourth inning, but to get Deja Mulipola to swing and miss, just incredible. 
from Yanez. And now, runner still on first. Two outs, and Jesse Harper steps in. She's been remarkable today. She's kind of been Haley Cruz's counterpart as his first pitch is low and outside for ball one. She's also got a double and a triple herself. So she's on cycle watch as well. And she's going to try and deliver the Wildcats their first run of this game in the same way that Cruz did just now in the bottom of the fifth. Here's the 1-0 with the runner still on first base. Two outs to Harper. That one on the outside called strike one. Just such a tense moment because you know anything in the zone over the middle, Harper is so locked in right now. You just know she's going to hit it hard. So yeah. you, you, it's kind of a dance you have to do. You, you try and shave corners, but if you walk her, it's not the end of the world. Ganez dances. Foul back into the net. First strike two, and you're right, Jordan. With a runner on, you can't afford to give her a free pass. You can't just pitch outside. You got to try and challenge her, but she's scorched two balls to the outfield, one to the gap off the bottom of the wall for the double, and one that almost left the yard to dead center. 220 just off the top of the wall it was nearly a homer for her. Here's the one, two. Swung on and missed. Another K. Sense. Sensational pitching from Brooke Yanez, who is now three outs away from one of the best games of her Oregon career. And the score is still 1-0 Oregon. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a runner left on first base. Delgado, Brito, and Sid will bat in the bottom of the sixth after this short break. Don't turn the dial. Oregon softball on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. Thank you for that lovely update, Justin. That was Justin Grossmeiner, our lovely producer today. And Jordan, I'm not surprised, honestly, that Washington was able to storm back. Still, the three runs on Gabby Plain that they were able to score is quite the achievement, but it looks like Washington's about to flip that one around and end up getting the win anyway. So here's Hannah Delgado in the bottom of the sixth. The Ducks lead 1-0, and they're now just gonna look for insurance runs. First pitch called, strike one. Melissa Denham still out there. It's difficult, I mean, we saw Hannah Bowen still, all things considered, pitched a great game yesterday. And here's Alyssa Denham pitching a pretty great game today. Swung on and missed, strike two to Delgado. So the Arizona pitching staff has nothing to complain about. They've just been getting outs, getting it done. And instead, the Wildcats lineup, which like we said, the best in the Pac-12, struggling. Outside for ball one to Delgado. She's going to get herself a 1-2 count. And Delgado figured out a way to get on base in the fourth inning with that bunt. And now you see the defense is playing her to bunt. 1-2, right on the outside line, but it's called a ball. So we're going to be at 2-2 two two for the leadoff hitter of this one, Delgado. Yeah, like you said, Delgado, one for two on the day. She had a pretty perfect bunt, which is kind of what you need. 2-2 pitch called, strike three on Delgado, and just strikeout number two on the day for Alyssa Denham, which both pitchers having pretty great performances, but it's funny just how opposite they've been with Denham, this being just her second strikeout, and Brooke Yanez sitting at nine Ks through six innings. Here comes Alyssa Brito, steps in with the bases empty and one out, 3-0. 0 for 2 on the day, looking to just swing her way out of a pretty rough slump. First pitch called strike one. And the 0 1 in to Brito. Swung on and missed, strike two. And the big issue for Brito and just trying to break out has been a lot of those big swings and misses. You know, if you're just putting the ball in play, if you're making contact, Jordan, something's going to fall. You're going to get some breaks. You're going to get some bloops. You're going to find your way on base, but you got to make contact, and it's been a real tough for Brito. Third pitch of this at bat is high for ball one. She's got herself into a one and two count. Yeah, I think, you know, such a streaky hitter, it feels like once she just gets that feeling once, once she just crushes one it might just ignite something for her down the stretch yeah definitely one two low for ball two and that's correct i mean if you just look at that tear that brito was on to start the season it's pretty comparable to what those freshmen on arizona have done 
and just showing up, being a freshman, and already being comfortable in the plate. Swung on, just got a piece of it to ground it back into the backstop, so it's going to still be 2-2 on Rita. It just seems like she's thinking a lot, right? So many practice swings, figuring out her hand position. She needs a hit. She needs a hit, and here's the 2-2 with one out. High for ball three. Maybe she needs a walk. Maybe it'll be a walk. Like you said, sometimes you don't break out of a slump by hitting one. Sometimes you just can maybe draw a couple walks in a row, feel good about your patience at the plate. And getting on base via the walk has been a pretty big issue for Brio. She only has 13 on the year. Here's the full count. Swung on, lined, and just foul down the right field line. But good contact. Yeah, and you just got to, in moments like these, take what you can try and carry it over to the next at bat. Even if you get out here, you barreled up a foul ball, you battled in this count, you fouled off some tough pitches. Yep. Brito this season with 13 walks compared to 36 strikeouts. Jane Sanders is trying to will their way into getting her on base. The full count pitch from Denham. Swung on and missed, gets away from the catcher. They're gonna throw it over the first for out number two. And that's strikeout number 37 in the second of this game for Alyssa Brio. So Denham's third strikeout of the day on a great pitch. May have kept it a little bit too high in the zone, but the change of speed confuses Brito and swings and misses. Yeah, Alyssa Denham, she may have given up a couple doubles back to back, but she's still just been great today. And you gotta give credit to this Arizona pitching staff. First pitch comes into Rachel Sid. It's gonna be strike one. She's 0 for 2 on the day. Arizona getting it done, and no walks from either pitcher today. Zero walks allowed, and it's just been really great placement. They're both executing the way that they want to. Second pitch is going to be a little inside for ball one on 59. So here's the 1-1 one -one from Denham to Sid. A little outside, a little low, it's gonna be ball two. Rachel Sid actually, her number, she's number 20, and she's currently the Oregon active career home run leader of everyone that's currently on the team with 20 home runs, Jordan. She just got her 20th. The two one, swung on, out to right field, coming in to make the grab on the run. That is gonna be caught by Hannah Martinez for out number three, so a one, two, three inning for the Ducks, but on the other side of this break, they're still going to have a one to zero lead. Brooke Yanez, three outs away from a complete game shutout. Stay tuned, you're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. Welcome back, Brooke Yanez pitched a gem against the number one offense in the conference yesterday, and she's three outs away from another gem. But as we saw yesterday, Jordan, as you're gonna take over the play-by-play -play duties for this one, a 1-0 lead can disappear pretty quickly as Oregon turned around a 1-0 lead and turned it into a 2-1 victory for them in just a few short batters. Yeah, all it takes is one swing, and that's what Yanez is going to try to avoid in the top of the seventh. Game two, Oregon one, Arizona nothing. Here's Malia Martinez. First pitch staying high. One ball, no strikes. Yanez picked up her 10th complete game of the season yesterday. Seven innings, one run. She is now in her 13th inning of the series. 13 in a row, one run against her. She's three outs away from picking up another win against a top 10 team. Swing and a miss on the 1-0. Martinez chased one above her helmet. Yanez got into trouble in the fourth inning. She gave up a single and a double in succession. Then she proceeded to strike out Martinez and Palacios. The one one two Martinez. Swing and a miss. She pumps it by her again. It's one and two. The next three hitters for Arizona are combined 0 for 6 today. One and two to Martinez. Yanez has her sign coming to the plate. She struck her out looking. The 11th for Yanez. Down goes Martinez. I had to count those one up, Jordan. 11 just doesn't feel real, but indeed she has struck out 
This is the third time this game that she has struck out three batters in a row. Special day at the office for Yanez, and here's Charlize Palacios. This pitch misses Lone away. One ball, no strikes. 11 strikeouts, three in a row for Yanez. 1 0 to Palacios. She's gone down looking twice. The 1 0 to the righty bounces. It's 2 0 to Palacios. But it can change at any given moment. Yeah, Jordan, but with three lefties coming up after Palacios, I think it needs to be her that gets on base. I think she's just got to find a way to get on base to start this. It's going to be tough to try and turn something with those lefties up with two outs. Now the wind, the 2 0. Back in the zone on the outside corner. Two balls, one strike to Palacios, who is tied for the lead on the team in home runs with 15. 2-1 to the DP in the top of the seventh. And now the pitch. Swing and a tapper goes foul. The count's evened up. Yana's battling back in the count to even it up at two. Two balls, two strikes here in game two. Oregon looking to take the series with this win in this game. The 2-2 to Palacios. And she looks at a pitch, set her cup up maybe a little bit high. And it's full now to Palacios on a really close pitch that Brett Higgins didn't like. Payoff pitch coming. The corners, even with the back, the rest of the field straight away. 3-2 with one out to Palacios. Swing and a foul ball to stay alive. Jordan, I was looking to see if Oregon made any fielding changes. You obviously want your best defense in, and everybody's the same. They already had their best defense in with Felder first, Pendolino in center. 3-2 to Palacios on its way. Swing and another foul. We'll get the third 3-2 pitch in a moment. So, yeah, reset the field. Sid Brito left side, Bunker bounded right side. Delgado, Pendolino, and Cruz left to right in the outfield, and Tara McGowan who's having a quick conversation with Yanez at catcher. Yeah, my mistake, Jordan. That's bowed in the place first base. Maya Felder's the DP. 3-2 for the third time. Palacios digging in, waves her bat a couple times. Yanez is on the center of the rubber, twisting, turning, coming home. She got her swinging! Yanez has a dozen strikeouts in her fourth in a row. The final hope for Arizona is Alyssa Palomino Cardoza. Of course, a first team All-American last year. A first team All-American in 2019. And Jordan, it's a pinch hitter actually. Oh, they're going with Ali Skaggs. Load away, pinch hitting for a two time All-American to get a righty at the plate. And Ali Skaggs takes the first pitch low and away. Yeah, I think this is just doing everything you can to get a righty at the plate as opposed to a lefty. Skaggs in a 1-0 count. She is a home run option off the bench. The 1-0. Breaking and missing the outside corner 2-0. So Skaggs off the bench this year has four home runs in 48 at-bats. Yeah, and she, Yanez has been so good. We gotta remind people that this could be a tie game with one swing and a bat. Two for her last four in the 2-0. Swing and a miss. She threw a buyer. Two and one. Crowd starting to sense it here in game one of the doubleheader. The Ducks won the game a night ago. Two to one. Looking for the series win. Base is empty. Top seven. Two one to the pinch hitter Skaggs. It comes in and hits her on the helmet and she'll be awarded first. It hit the bill of the helmet, and thank goodness it did. She heads to first with a hit by pitch. And that breaks the strikeout streak, which was four in a row for Yanez. And we'll see another pinch hitter here for Arizona. They bring up another righty. Here comes
D did you see the number here? No, the hair's kind of blocking the number perfectly, and you see a bit of a real conversation here between the uh, Arizona State manager, I mean, Arizona manager, and our umpire, Ms. Liz Ms. Lombardi, looks takes that the opportunity to have a meeting in the circle, so now she's going to talk to her pitchers. That's one way to start a rally for sure is to catch a pitch right in the bill of your helmet. Um, but Arizona will take whatever they can get. And like you said, it won't be Carly Scoopin. We know that for sure. It's going to be Hannah Bowen. Wow. Hannah Bowen, last night's starter. She had a perfect game into the seventh, gave up a two-run home run in the seventh. And now the game comes to her. Yeah. Does she have a two-run home run in the seventh in her? Yeah, and Bowen, she does have 27 plate appearances on the year, so she's comfortable in the plate. She's definitely a hitter, but she's also got zero extra base hits so far this season. So Three for 21, that's right, 143 hitter. Yeah, <laughs> interesting choice. But hey, guess what, Jordan? She's a righty, and I think that's what's happening here is Arizona is saying, if you're gonna if you're gonna shut us out, at least do it against righties. We're not gonna give you any more free outs from left-handed hitters. Coach Candrea calls on Hannah Bowen with two outs in the seventh. The first pitch is high to her. Want to know? She's just five four, so it is a small zone against her. Skaggs is on first. She was just hit by a pitch. She's the tying run in this one nothing ball game. Yana is looking for the complete game shutout. The 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball. That's going to be called a strike. Even up at one. Yana is in her zone. Playing catch with McGowan. Picks up some dirt. Slams the ball into her glove and readies. Peers in for her sign. Coming home. The 1-1. Swinging a grounder to third. Sid has it, but it's ruled foul. The throw is in time, but it is a foul ball. One and two to Bowen. Those are some of those 50-50 plays. That would be out number three if it just stayed fair as Sid was right there, but right as Sid was getting up to it, it rolled foul. So Hannah Bowen will still be at the plate. Two strikes though. One ball, two strikes. The tying runner on first. Yanez ready. Here it is. Swing and a foul back to the screen with a runner going. Skaggs has to return to first. So hit and run put on by Arizona there. Trying to make something happen. Yeah, Jordan and Hannah Bowen gave up the two run walk off homer yesterday. Talk about redemption. The storylines write themselves with her at the plate. A ball and two strikes. Swing and a little fly ball in the infield. Giannis takes it herself. A complete game shutout. Oregon wins the series. And in game two, one nothing final. Special couple of days at the chain for Brooke Giannis. Oregon wins the series. Arizona, their struggles against ranked teams continue. They are two and 10 against teams in the top 25. A dozen strikeouts for Brooke Yanez in a complete game shutout. Her 11th complete game of the season. And Michael, how this Oregon team has turned it around after a 4-11 stretch their last few weeks. What a way to start the series against a contender to win the Women's College World Series. Yep. I came into today wondering if today would be the Empire Strikes Back and the Wildcats, well, they didn't strike at all. They scored zero runs. They got nothing going. And I think... Most likely the next game of this doubleheader won't have Brooke Yanez in the circle. And if that's true, it's going to be a big sigh of relief for Arizona not to be looking at her. And they may turn that around and actually score some runs, but you just have to be in awe of what Brooke Yanez has done here in Jane Sanders Stadium. I think the, the crowd here appreciated it, but we had yesterday, we had today, one 
earned run allowed across 14 innings of work against an Arizona lineup that statistically jumps off the page. Absolutely incredible, and wow, I, I'm speechless, Jordan. And Oregon now in the driver's seat to host a regional. I feel comfortable saying that. A win next game, well, you can all but ensure it unless you see a disaster against Cal. What a game one of this doubleheader. The pitching prowess continues. Oregon won, Arizona nothing in game one. Keep it tuned here. We'll return in about 30 minutes for game two of this doubleheader. Oregon and Brooke Yanez get the win. Haley Cruz, the player of the game at the play, going three for three, a single, a double, a triple. For everybody who made this broadcast possible, thank you very much. Justin Grossweiner back at our studio. Michael Streit on color. This is Jordan Brenner saying hang tight. Game two coming. The Ducks won. Arizona nothing. And Oregon wins the series. Back to your regularly scheduled programming right here on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM.